Hi, welcome to another video. So today I'm in the middle of repairing the second Mackie SRM450 version 2 for one customer. First one was easy, just simple PFC circuit. Well, I say easy, easy because I've had a ton of experience. This one has an odd fault and I thought I'll show you. Without the speakers plugged in, the amp would power up. There was an issue with the synchronization between the PFC signal and the switch mode power supply signal. That was rectified with a capacitor down here. C195, the quote 1 nanofarad. I find it works best with a 1.5 nanofarad. Just down here. That sorted the sync out. Didn't plug the speakers in. Put a 2 amp quick blow fuse in. And it powered up. Plugged the speakers in. It blew a fuse. So I turned it off. Let it cool down. Let this inrush suppressor cool down. Put another 2 amp fuse in. Plug the speakers in, turn the mains on, pop. A two amp fuse, right, I've got a problem. So what do you do when it's blowing fuses on the mains and there's no short circuit FETs? The answer, get a third power supply. I've actually shown you before. So quick overview, hopefully you can see the leads. I'll turn my power supply off for a second. The negative for the PFC and switch mode power supply is the anode of this Zeno diode down here. The 18 volt power supply I use is the cathode of D37 over here. And to power up the switch mode power supply, I've actually got a 1K resistor tied in there because I couldn't find a bit of wire. I've got eight volts running to that pad I've shown before. When I disconnect it, I'll show you the pad. But so I've got eight volts here running to the comparator and 18 volts here. Just a fraction over 18 you need, but 18.2. This circuit all now works fine. Plug the speakers in, blow the fuse. Right, so I put another power supply on. I don't want to adjust it because it's temperamental. At the moment, here's my mains input. You can't connect your scope to this circuit when it's plugged into the mains. You will destroy your scope. And this with the software costs a lot of money and I haven't got a shed load of fuses so stick another power supply here if you haven't got one you need to go and get one you need roughly 50 volts you can go away with 45 ish but you need about 50 volts DC here my power supply runs up to 3 amps this one here I'd like a bigger one but I haven't got the money I use this method when I have a base problem and it's blowing the mains fuse. Obviously you can't limit the current from the mains, but you can limit the current from a power supply. So let me turn this power supply back on. And if you can see that with a light on or off, we've got 40 milliamps being drawn. See if I can get this to play up. Right, so I'll turn the volume from the signal generator on the scope. I'll turn the volume up on this. It's really temperamental. See now it's not playing up. Oh, there it goes. This is going into current limit, which is set all the way up to 3 amps. There we go, had to refocus this camera. I don't know if it's better if I turn the light off. But you can see it was just clicking just then, and now it's stopped. Let's see if I can get the signal back. There we go. We've got a positive supply there but that is not a sine wave but if I turn the volume, that's the max volume turn the volume down so we're missing the negative half cycle of the sine wave see that would now not be blowing a fuse it's drawing 1.8 amps at 38 volts if I turn that voltage up a touch oh there we go that would now be popping a fuse. There we go. Right, so the power supply has gone quiet. That's supplying, I don't want to refocus the camera, 2 amps, 38 volts. That's why you can't hear the clicking. And that's what the output is doing. Can up to the rail and down and that would be popping a fuse. 
and that's running at 29 hertz. So hopefully these FETs are in focus, or at least the screws. These two base FETs, I already tested them, they're not short circuit. So I'm thinking, what is happening to that negative supply for the negative going signal? It's not the FETs. Had a quick look around this area, nothing obvious. I thought, right, start at the beginning, the plus and minus 75 volt rail. On this power supply, on this power supply, I had plus 50 and nothing, nothing on the middle terminal. So I thought, well, there's no short circuit, or not that I could see. I thought maybe this FET driver is pulling the low side down and effectively shorting out my negative rail. So remembering I'm on a DC power supply, not the mains, makes it a touch safer, but this does still produce 300 volts from 50, so you've still got to be careful. I put my meter on diode test, tested this common anode, common cathode. This positive one was fine. This negative, I wasn't getting continuity. I wasn't getting a short circuit, but I wasn't getting a continuity and the capacitor was charging up. So since I can safely put the scope on it with my power supply, so we have no mains earth, I'll put this scope on these diode pins. Well, even though it's on, so it's running at 38 volts and we still have hundreds of volts here. So you still have to be careful, but I'm now not on mains. I'm on an isolated power supply, no earth, I can put my scope on. If I do the plus 75 first, the, the positive pin is in the middle. We've got a diode on either side. So if I put my scope there, I need to synchronize this. It's difficult, the camera's in the way. Well, you've still got to be careful. Let me I'll put my arms in the way for a second. That'll do. Right, now I'll get out of the way. Move behind the camera. Right, so this is the input to the common anode and common anode, common cathode diode. This is the, let me see the drawing. So the positive 75 volt rail has got common anodes. And this is effectively the AC from that transformer. This is one side, this is the other side. And you can see the frequency, hopefully 67 kilohertz, 100, 20 odd volts, 110, 120 volts peak to peak at a 38 volt DC input. So it's low because I'm not up at 50 volts. Obviously if you had mains, that would come right up. This is the middle pin, which is a common cathode. Right, there we go. I have got plus 49 volts there. Hopefully you can see the number top right hand corner. So I've got plus 50 volts. Now if I move to the negative diode, I don't know what I said about this last diode. So the negative diode, it's common anode. And on each cathode, we have that signal there. On the other cathode, we have that signal there. On the middle pin, which is common anode, Bearing in mind this is the negative voltage rail, so the dies are back to front. Look, we've got minus 7.3. Nothing. So I thought there's maybe, and that's probing. This camera won't zoom any further. That's probing those two diodes in there. So one has a common cathode, one has a common anode. This is the positive 50 minus 50 on the middle pins and I have nothing on the middle pin. The FET on a negative rail is not short circuit. I'll turn everything off. So you've seen the signals. Right, both powers will have turned off. I can now disconnect my leads. Remember, remember when running this at 
30, 40, 50 volts, you will still get over 300 volts on this PFC. And you can get the amp to run nicely at roughly quarter power on 50 volts DC. So you can potentially injure yourself, so be careful. If I unplug everything, I thought this was an interesting fault. And certainly if you're a novice, it will catch you out. Actually, that resistor, wow, red hot. So obviously running this at 30, 40, 50 volts, I'm lim this is, it's current limited to three amps. It's not gonna keep on blowing the fuse. So you can see right, what in this base circuit is causing the problem. So there's a close look. There's the base FET. This 12 volt regulator, the common for this 12 volt is the minus 75 volt rail, which is in the middle here. So if we haven't got minus 75, we haven't got minus 75, take 12, gives you minus 63, which means this driver for the FETs isn't powered up. There's a better look at the two diodes inside. I thought, why haven't I got any supply at all? And I couldn't get continuity on those two diodes in this package. And I thought, I wonder, I've had the odd broken lead give you a buzzing, but yeah, normally one of the leads, not all of them. Now I don't know if I can get in there. I think I can see it on my cam, but well, I can see this on the camera screen, a bit out of focus. But it's difficult trying to get this camera to focus in this gap. So we've got positive diode on the right, negative diode on the left, and hopefully this camera will pick it up. And by the time it's shown on a big computer screen, or you can zoom in on your mobile phone. All the legs are broken. So we have no minus 75 because all the legs are broken. So I thought this was going to be another nightmare because shortly after Christmas, every amp that came to me, these power supply fets were blown, they were blown because the base fets were blown and they were blown because these the circuit around here was blown and you can spend hours and hours and hours chasing your tail so hopefully this is just the case of taking the board off which is a real pain replacing this diode and putting it back together and testing it so I'll do that and come back and before I forget, yeah, before I do come back, so the 18 volts I put on this cathode of this Zeno diode here, D37, put 18.2 volts here, and the ground for these circuits is the anode of this Zeno diode down here. So ground there around there, 18 volts here, and I have my 1k resistor putting in 8 volts just next to this, this A7, there's a spare pad on the right hand side, just there. So 8 volts via this comparator, so 8 volts, this switch my power supply chip thinks there is mains and it turns on. Right, so this amp is back together. This common anode package, all the legs snapped off. So we've got two square waves coming in on the outside and negative 75 in the middle. So no wonder I couldn't get continuity on diode test because they were all snapped off. However, I was reading the voltage on the capacitors, which are obviously mounted to the board. So the diode's in there, I've got 8 volts ready to turn on there, 18 volts on the end, I've got my 50 volts ready to turn on here, 
So if I turn this on, so we've got 18.2, if I move this lead out of the way, 18.2 on the outside, it's drawing 50 to 60 milliamps. This 8.5 for the comparator, less than 10 milliamps. You're probably only a milliamp or so. Turn on my signal generator on the scope. That's one kilohertz. I'll set the signal generator here, one kilohertz, 60 millivolts peak to peak. So as I say, you've got to be careful. Although we're going to put 40, 50 volts DC here, which is pretty harmless, this PSC will produce over 300 volts easily. Right, so all that's left to do is turn this on, I think. I haven't tested it yet, so let's see what I've got my scope lead on the resistor, dummy, dummy load for the speaker. My scope is on 10 volts of division. Right, let's turn this second power supply up. Oh, that's handy. The current's working on this. Normally I have to bang the side of this. I took it apart once looking for a dry joint. Never did find it. So it's looking good so far, I think. I'll leave it 45, so at 45 volts, we've got half an amp, we've got no signal, no signal on the scope, so let me come around and turn the volume up, maybe if I turn this light off, you might better see the scope, I'll turn the volume up, well, we've got something there, I think we can get something like 30 or 40 volts peak to peak on the audio output from a 3 amp 50 volt power supply. So we're looking for 30 40 volts peak to peak RMS on the base. Right, I refocus the camera. I can trigger this on the waveform generator. Channel 1 down to wave gen. There we go. Looks like it's working. That's her sine wave. One kilohertz, 12 volts peak to peak. So if I can turn this up to 50 volts, which is all it does. 49.1 today. Half an amp, 12 volts peak to peak. Now I'll turn the volume up on the amp as I say, 50, no, 60 millivolts coming from the scope. So this will start clipping at about 30, 40 volts from memory because this power supply, this one here, will start limiting on current, about three amps. We'll see. So, so far so good, it looks like it's all working. So we're doing 30, 40 volts. There we go. That's now clipping because of my power supply. And because the power supply is cold, we've got 3.3 .3 amps. That is working spot on and we have got 57 volts peak to peak clipping. So if I turn the signal down, which is difficult with this camera in a way, there we go. Right, so at 49.1, don't know why we haven't got 50 today, 49.1 volts DC, 2.8 amps, 49.50 volts peak to peak on the base, which is actually going on for half the power. And I can hear these coils whining, these coils here. So that is spot on. So at 50 volts, 
we've got 3 amps. At 240 volts we will have less than 2 amps. So I think this is now safe to put a 2 amp put a 2 amp quick blow fuse here. But before I come off this power supply, what you might notice is this current, this 50 60 milliamps has dropped to nothing. So when via the big resistors that most of the Mackie people know about, via those big resistors we get 16 volts to drive this pulse width modulation chip. That then starts pulling current through this PFC coil via a FET down there. The rectified 220, 240 volts, rectified and smooth, that comes up to about 320 volts. This boosts it to 380 volts. Once this circuit is switching on and off, it's effectively like an alternating current. This coil has a couple of smaller turns internally. This then supplies itself and this chip will actually run down to 10 volts. But the few windings inside the bottom of this coil supply at least 1670 volts for this circuit. So then those big resistors that can supply about 7.7 .7 milliamps max are then able to supply this switch mode power supply. This boots up, creates your plus and minus 15, plus and minus 39, plus and minus 75, a plus 12 diode down here, which is for that regulator, and it supplies 18 volts to this circuit to supply all the circuits. So the PFC has to work for the switch mode power supply to cut in. If this doesn't work, this will draw too much current and it won't start. That is why you will have about 240 volts RMS and on one side of the big resistor and 12 on the other. It's all drawing too much current. Yeah, so this, the big resistors that get hot, can't show you because it's all connected. As I say, they can, those big resistors can only supply 7 milliamps. So if this circuit's drawing too much current, or this circuit's drawing too much current, or the comparator's failed and it's drawing too much current, none of it will start. Once it's started, the voltage comes up and equalises, so the resistor starts cooling down. So see now my power supply is warming up, 49 volts, 3.1 amps, and let me just show you with a meter. If I show you with respect to ground, although this whole amp isn't grounded, although yes it is, via the audio and via the scope. So with reference to this earth, on this fuse we have our 46 volts DC, so we've lost a bit through the filters and everything. Now if I use this ground here, without knocking anything off, go to the big resistor, Three hundred nineteen volts DC. Hopefully you can see that. Being careful not to short anything out. Three nineteen on one side. Seventeen point seven on the other. This voltage is a little low, but we're obviously running off fifty volts not 240. I'll turn this power supply up, so 2.5 amps has come down to, so 2.5 amps at 50 volts, 49 volts peak to peak on the base, which is half power, RMS, and that's getting red. I think it's getting red hot. I think this resistor is getting red hot. Yeah, that's roasting. So now I'll turn this off, Mains is off, that power supply is off, disconnect everything, and 
throw everything out of the way. You don't want anything shorting out. Get rid of that. I will now disconnect this. Neutral is there. Live is there. I've got a 2 amp quick blade fuse ready. This is a 10 amp. 2 amp quick blow. Actually, I need to leave it for a few minutes because this inrush limiter is hot. Right, so I've put the power supplies away, left it 5 10 minutes. The inrush limiter is nice and cool. So the inrush limiter will work. That will reduce the inrush current to these capacitors and it will stop my 2 amp quick blow fuse blowing. So I plugged it into the mains, now we've got mains here, 240 volts, so these can kill. Well, if I turn the power on, we might see a little flick on the scope. Yeah, I saw it, I don't know if this camera will pick it up. Not sure if I turn off the light. The fan wind symbol has come up on this camera because of the noisy fan on this thing. Right, so the signal generator is still on. 1 kilohertz, 60 volts, or so 60 millivolts, peak to peak. So if I now turn up the volume, I'll not even look to see if the power lights come on. But it must have, and there's our signal. Right, so when these are cold, you can get over 100 volts peak to peak. If I focus this camera on the scope, right, hopefully we'll be able to read these numbers over here. So I'll set this to 20 volts per division and turn this volume control up. Forty-seven like well, that. 108 volts peak to peak. 107, 108 volts peak to peak before it starts clipping. You've seen me test these before. So we have 350 watts RMS on the base and another 100 watts RMS on the treble. So let me turn the volume up again. That bit there, what's happening there? I'll turn the volume down for a second. Both these circuits, this PFC, this 0.1 ohm resistor, and this switch mode power supply, 0.1 ohm resistor, when you get one volt across this 0.1 ohm resistor, a little transistor turns on and turns this chip off. So you start losing the signals to the transformer. So this, this starts limiting the current at 100 volts peak to peak. Similarly with this circuit, yeah, one volt across this 0.1 ohm, little transistor underneath, it starts knocking off pulses on this PWM controller. So with these two resistors, these circuits protect themselves. Until of course, you get something like gate erosion and this FET under here just decides to go short circuit. Common fault. So you get 320 volts rectified mains. That transistor pulls current from this PFC coil down to ground through this resistor. This sees that current limit. The transistor switches off, the magnetic field collapses and is rectified. Oh, the magnetic field collapses, induces a current that's rectified by a diode here and the voltage goes from 320 to 380. Having this PFC as a power factor correction, since we have an inductive load, that would distort the mains. So since it's over 600 watts, Mackie fitted a PFC circuit, that gives us 380 volts, stops any interference on the mains, but that also means this transformer can be smaller because we are 
switching 380 volts, not 320. That's why this coil is powerful, because we're working with 380 volts. So, as I've, yeah, I've mentioned the rest before, line filters. So I've mentioned the rest before, these common mode chokes. Stop noise getting back out onto the mains. Amplifiers for the bass and treble. Bass vets, treble, chip down there, 100 watt. PFC, FET and diode, two FETs for the switch mode power supply. And that's all about it. Oh, an air-cooled coil in here to take out the 400 kilohertz to the speaker. The 400 kilohertz approximately, which is the switching frequency of the class D for the bass. And I've demonstrated the bass signal before. So this was blowing mains fuses because we'd lost our 12 volt supply which is tied to the minus 75 as of you yeah we'd lost our minus 75 so we didn't have plus 12 volts to drive the circuit but the plus 12 is with reference to the minus 75 so minus 75 plus 12 is minus 63 that's 12 volts for this circuit here so simple broken diode assembly but, yeah, blowing fuses. I've never had it. I've had one leg break on the positive, which would give you a buzzing on the speaker. Never all the legs broken on one diode, causing it to blow fuses. So I thought it would be interesting to show you. So that's the base resistor I use. Let me just give you a demo of the treble. So this one on the treble, I think this is NATO. Right, so there's the resistor for the tweeter. That's the resistor for the tweeter. So you can see we haven't got much of a signal because we're now on the tweeter circuit. So we've got the tiniest amount of bass there. 1.4 volts peak to peak on the bass. Or well, 1.4 volts peak to peak at one kilohertz. But now if we turn the frequency up, they usually max out at 4 kilohertz. They've got a peak response. Let me show you. Right, frequency. 2 kilohertz. 2.93. Alright, so that's maxing out there at 3.8 kilohertz but now if I turn the volume you'll see it shoot up and then with the circuits there's a compression to bring it down to stop you blowing your tweeter come around to the volume watch closely oh maybe I'll turn the scope down All right well I'll just knock this camera out of focus I'll turn the treble up. Still not good enough. 10 volts peak to peak. There you go. So see it shoot up, it shoots up and then comes down itself. Usually around to about 50, yeah. So 47 volts peak to peak on the treble. But it shoots over that. I saw 70 volts peak to peak. And that's how the treble circuit works. So I'm quite pleased. This is the second amp belonging to one customer. Had them for a few days fixing the PFC circuit on the other one. So I've shown you what the fault was on this and gone into more detail for the PFC and switch mode power supply because it does seem to confuse some people. But you know, if you're not experienced, you're not experienced. Got to learn how somehow. And just a reminder, if you're working on these, they've got mains, they can kill you. Hopefully this has been entertaining and educational, and I nearly forgot, or in fact I did forget in the last video with a drill, thank you to Martin Lorenzik. I probably messed up the pronunciation, but thank you Martin for your generous donation. And thank you all for watching. See you again next time.